Hello to Meryl and Ron. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? Great. I'm great too. Thank you. I love this series. Like honestly, <laughs> I've already watched all eight episodes of season two. It's so good. So anybody, and anybody who brings me Outlander, and you know, I I'm there. Well, whatever you wanted to, I'm there. So thank you so much for this, uh, Meryl. Let's just start with you because I I love the fact that this show is an alternate history, but I want to know how difficult it is, kind of, you know, uh, separating fact from fiction. Well, actually, I mean, I think when we started the series, we always wanted to keep it kind of pretty much, as Ron has always said, tethered to our real history. I think we all didn't want to do a dystopian drama or something that was so far afield from um, our natural timeline that it was unrecognizable. I think for us, it felt more grounded if it was based in reality, but yet something as simple as the Russians beating us to the moon in the first series kind of set a trajectory that was slightly different and actually kind of more forward thinking in many ways than um, our current timeline. So I think we love that idea. We love the idea of um, making sure women were, it was a more inclusive society for women, diversity. And I think we keep forwarding that agenda as the seasons go on. Absolutely. Uh, Ron, we're in the 80s now. And, um, you know, uh, we deal a lot with the Russians in this. Um, what was it like to kind of put get this season off the ground, no pun intended, and just seeing where everybody went? It, it just, it's, oh, God, it's so, so good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, it was really fun. I mean, the second season, uh, we enjoyed it quite a bit. You know, there was a challenge to move all the characters forward 10 years in their lives. And but it was a lot of fun to talk about how the world had changed and what the alternate history version of the 1980s was. And, you know, we just all sat in the writer's room and had a lot of fun and, you know, did a lot of things, a lot of thinking about things that could happen. Some stuff we wanted to do in the show itself that we couldn't get to, we put into the montage at the very first episode. Right. So we had a little bit of fun doing that. It was great. It was a really enjoyable uh, exercise. Yeah, and Meryl, you know, like I, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, I, what I, one thing I do love about the show is is the way that women are portrayed. I mean, we see all all facets of them, but it just you know, the, the opportunity for a woman to go to space that early. I mean, we all. I, I think this is fabulous. How much you know are you enjoying putting women so into the forefront on this show? <laughs> I'm enjoying it immensely. I mean, I think I was shocked, shocked to learn that the Russians put a woman into space 20 yeah. years before the Americans. I just, that to me was so deeply shocking. And I think, you know, when we were doing research in season one and we found out about the Mercury 13 program with the female astronauts who scored as well as, and if not in some cases better than the men, but still were grounded and never put into space seemed like such a travesty to all of us that I feel like that was certainly a place we wanted to rectify that in the first season and the second season. And it is gratifying. It is gratifying to be able to correct a part of history you don't feel is um, where we should have been. And, and I think we all feel that we're doing something important and saying something important about that. Absolutely. Okay, so now that you're uh, space aficionados, Ron, uh, this show couldn't be more timely because Elon Musk is now sending civilians to the moon. So with your incredible um, research and everything, what advice would you give these people? <laughs> uh, build in time to enjoy yourself, you know, because what, everything we have discovered about astronauts, whether they're on the moon or they go to the space station or the shuttle, yeah. is their time is just like booked to the point where it's madness. Like it's just an endless treadmill of do this, do this, do this, do this, rest, do this, do this, do this. And there's yeah. very little time to just sort of look around and enjoy where you are. So I would really hope that they enjoy the place that they're in and, and as well as doing the 50,000 experiments and things that they always get tasked to do. Absolutely. Meryl, maybe you can get up there and represent us as uh, the first civilian woman. What do you think? I am the last person. I'm so scared of flying. I mean, everyone says, oh, surely you want to go to the moon. And I'm like, actually, I don't. <laughs> I don't have any desire. I'm so thrilled to see it through the show, through pictures, through actual um, very competent astronauts. So I'm good where I am. I'm kind of with you. Well, congratulations again. I, I, I love this. I can't even wait for season three already. I'm, I'm ready for it. So thanks, guys, and a pleasure to talk to you today about the show. Thanks, Thank Bonnie.